this video will be making a station platform and building from scratch. Now in the first half of the video I'm a complete nerd about 3D modeling and stuff, but in the second half I actually print and paint it. So if you are not interested in 3D modeling, skip to that timestamp. Anyway, let's get started. For modeling I use Blender and for printing I have a Creality Highlight 1. I have been learning Blender for about 3 years now and I thought to print the model you just export it as a STL, run it through a slicer and print it. But it's not that easy. See, Blender isn't a CAD software and it allows you to model almost anything you want, even if it can't exist in real life. So basically, CAD software uses math to define shapes, whereas Blender uses polygons and vertices. CAD is used for engineering of physical components, whereas Blender is used for 3D modeling, animation, rendering, lighting and much more. In order to have a successful print, your model must be watertight. There's also a Blender add-on that helps with this. It can help you identify faces without any thickness, thin faces, sharp edges and overhanging faces. Blender is very powerful, but it has a steep learning curve. So unless you are very serious about modeling your own stuff, I can't really recommend Blender. There are some CAD programs out there that's much easier to use. If you have seen my paper kits, all of those textures were also made in Blender. It's a super nice tool for almost anything and on top of that it's free and includes a ton of different add-ons for many different things. For me it makes sense to learn Blender because I want to work in the industry. By the way, for the last two years I've been making and modifying game assets for a game called World Turtles. It's a strategy game where you help your meep save the life of the World Turtle they live on. Feel free to check it out. Anyway, when it comes to printing I have a few tips. Number 1. When you first get or design a model you want to print, it's tempting to print more than one or to just fill up the build plate. It's ok to do this, but just do a test print with one at first to make sure it prints without any errors. Resin isn't cheap and you don't want to use a lot of resin if you're not sure if it will print correctly. Number 2. After printing, use a brush to help clean off the resin. Don't just rinse it with IPA. And afterwards, I like to rinse it with some tap water to remove the IPA. I have found if I don't do this, the IPA creates white marks on the model after curing. Number 3. If you print a model like this building in one piece, it's nice to use a curing station or something that rotates the model while it's curing to avoid warping. But if you don't have that option, just rotate the model like every minute while it's curing. I don't think it's necessary to share the more basic things about resin printing, like bed leveling and stuff, because that's included in the printer's manual. Now, to make the station platform, I start by taking a photo of the layout where the station should go. I then import it in Blender as a reference. This helped me to see how it would look on the layout. I modeled it in three separate pieces, otherwise it wouldn't fit on the print bed. It took me a few tries to get it to print successfully. On the first ones, the support structure underneath was resulting in some warping, because of the way I printed it. But after modifying the model a bit so it starts more gradually with the problem layers, it printed much better. I recommend printing stuff like this one by one, even if it takes 3 times as long. Because it's just so easy for something to go wrong and again, resin isn't cheap. Question: Do you have a resin printer and which one is it? I'm curious to know, please let me know in the comments. Printing the building was very easy, unlike the station platform, it printed without any errors. I guess printing a station platform like this on such a small printer isn't very smart, but I wanted to see if it was possible. After printing for many hours, curing everything and some sanding, I can finally start painting. Oh, let's go. This will bring out a lot of detail, I spent so much time modeling, it took me about 2 days. 
But to make the video more interesting, I will paint it by hand using a paintbrush, instead of using an airbrush. Painting this type of model with an airbrush will give the best result and it will be faster. But I imagine most people don't have an airbrush and I think painting it without using an airbrush will be less boring. <laughs> It's probably a good idea to prime the surface with a primer first, however I don't have any. So I decided to use a good quality black acrylic paint as a primer or base coat. For the paint I will use these Humbrol enamel paints. At first I wanted to paint the roof tiles a kind of clay color instead of the red like in my reference. But after painting it this color I realized I like the red more, so I changed it. Next, the walls. I knew this would be the hardest to paint with a brush, because painting smooth surfaces without brush marks is challenging. However, it doesn't have to be smooth, it can have a bit of texture to it. So my plan was to apply about 3 to 4 thin layers to avoid brush marks, and also using a stippling motion like this. With the first layer applied it looked kinda bad, not gonna lie. I waited about 30 minutes before applying the second layer. With the second layer applied, I knew with like two more layers applied, it would look much better and with no more black showing through. Applying four layers was time consuming, taking about five hours. Using an airbrush just for the walls would definitely be worth it. However, it's nice to know that this is possible with a paintbrush as well. Moving on, I used this yellow paint for all the other details, basically just copying the reference. I didn't make this model to be an exact copy of the original, I just used it for inspiration and also copied the color scheme. Pro tip, when painting details like this and you need a steady hand, avoid drinking coffee a few hours before painting, because coffee tends to make you jittery. Yeah, I know it's hard, but it works, at least for me. If you screw up, you can always go back and fix it with the other color. When I tell you no, you throw a tantrum. You're never satisfied with what you have. By the way, if you are enjoying this video, don't forget to subscribe, I'm so close to 10,000. I found it to be really enjoyable painting this model, in my opinion it turned out looking great. One final thing, this is an old trick, to add window glazing you can use clear packaging material, cut small pieces and glue it in on the inside of the model like this. I'll maybe make an interior for the station building. But first, if you join me in the next video, I'll be painting the station platform itself and we'll be weathering the building and the platform. If you want the STL file of this building, let me know in the comments. Anyways, I hope this video was helpful or at least entertaining. If it was, make sure to like the video, it really helps. And I'll see you in the next video.